Hi again out there in Freeman land. Um, over the last few weeks I've had quite a number of inquiries um, about people who have actually uh, ended up in court and have uh, sort of come unstuck in a, uh, in a big way. And uh, so I thought I'd put this little presentation together to help some of you who haven't perhaps got as far along the path with doing the paperwork and are still at the courtroom stage. Because once you get the paperwork um, done, you you will never need to go to court again. So this is for the people who have unfortunately ended up in the courts, and it is a scary place to be. But we, we never go there. Only corporations go to court. So the first thing you've got to learn to do is to make sure that the paperwork is correct, and you'll never need to go to court again. So... Uh, but for those who haven't got there, let's, uh, let's have a look and see how we can put this right. If you've not done the paperwork and do, it up, do end up in court, here is what you have to do. To get us into the court, someone has to lay a charge. Now, um, the charge may be um, running a red light. Um, it could be any number of things. But someone has to lay the charge. So we'll go to Bovier's Online Law Dictionary, which is uh, the easiest for most of you out there in Freeman land to access. Just go into Google and type in Bovier's Online Law Dictionary, and it will bring it up. And then you can have a look at every word that they're presenting to you, because it's most important to know the words if you're going to uh, rebut anything that they say. So let's have a look at what charges. Contracts. Straight away, they're telling us what it is. It's a contract. It's an obligation entered to by the owner of an estate. Okay, now here's the clue. Who owns the estate? Well, as the government set the estate up, the government is the owner of the estate. So, an obligation entered into by the owner of an estate, which makes the estate responsible for its performance. Okay, there's only one way that they can make it perform, and that's to trick us into performing. So once we, once we know who we are, this makes it a lot easier. If we know that we're not that estate, we can rebut all their presumptions. Okay, now the next part says, any obligation binding upon him who enters into it, which may be removed or taken away by a discharge. Okay, so they're telling us there that we can discharge the um, the charge. The next part says that particular kind of commission which one undertakes to perform for another. Now what they're telling us here is that the person who lays the charge against us is going to get a commission if they can get us to perform. So why do you think they try so hard to get us to go into the court and perform because once we get fined they get a commission on it. Okay, which one undertakes to perform for another? In keeping the custody of goods, in keeping the custody of his goods. So they are holding on to our title of the estate. Okay, and this is what is called the charge. They, they're coming in with a charge against our estate, and they're trying to get a commission on it. In, here in New Zealand, they do it under Section 49 of the District Court Act, and if you, it's in one of my other videos that you can have a look at as well. Okay, but let's let's look a bit further into Bovier's online law dictionary again, and it tells you wills, devices, an obligation which a testator imposes on his devisee. Okay, so who's the testator and who's the devisee? So the testator is them. And they're imposing it on us. As if the testator give Peter Blackacre and direct that he shall pay to John during his life an annuity of $100, which shall be a charge on the said land. Now, we are the land. If you go back through some of my older videos, you will see that we are the land. Or if a legacy be, be and directed to be paid out of the real property. So what they're trying to do is, is to raid our property by getting us to perform. So if we know these sort of things, then we can start to discover what the courts are. But now let's look at the Butterworth New Zealand Law Dictionary, 
And you'll see it's also the same, an encumbrance on the land or on a fund. Okay. And number four, a commission. Okay, so once again, they're telling us that they can get a commission if they can get us to perform. It's it's very, very simple. It's all about money. Now all we have to do to find out is who is laying the charge, who the charge is against, and how to discharge it without going through all the rigmarole of getting convictions and all that sort of hoo-ha and paying huge amounts of money. So now the prosecutor comes into the picture. He's the one who lays the charge against the estate of John Doe. Now we are a deceased estate, so we've put the tombstone in there to show you who it's uh, laid against. When we were born, an estate was created and the prosecution must somehow get us to pay the charges for the estate. So if if he can do that, he's going to get a commission. And that's the whole idea of what the court is. Now, the prosecutor lodges the charge with the court registrar. The court registrar has a look at the, um, the document. And if she thinks that she can make money from it, she's going to put it before the court. Because the prosecutor is hoping that we don't know who we are. And is laying a bit with the registrar registrar that we do not know who we are. Therefore, if we don't know who we are, we're going to end up paying the charges out of our wallet. Now, I don't think many of us want to do that, really. But however, the registrar accepts the wager, stamps it with the stamp, lodges it in the court, and sends the paperwork, which is only a bill of exchange, she sends the paperwork to the real live man. There's the real live man. Now, the real live man gets served documents and sees his name. And because we think that that name is actually us, we think it's meant for us. It's not, though, folks. It's not. Okay, now one of two things is now likely to take place. And the first one is that we will panic and hire a lawyer. Or we may go along to the court and represent ourselves. Most, most of the, the people in the free man movement um, go along and represent themselves. But both are wrong. So we need to see why both are wrong. And it's really quite simple. is Because represent, if we're going to represent ourselves, we have to look at it. Represent is actually two words. Represent. Now, if you present yourself, that means you present yourself in front of someone. But if you represent, what you're actually doing is representing yourself as the fiction or the deceased estate. And here we go to Bovier's and it says representation of persons, a fiction of the law. Now, if that doesn't wake you up to what's going on, then nothing will, because it's not fact, it's fiction. In other words, a fantasy. A fiction of the law, the effect of which is to put the representative in the place, degree, or right of the person represented. Okay, so what they're trying to do is to put us in place of the person which is the deceased estate. So, therefore, the moment that we do... Um, stand up and say we're going to represent ourselves we have got or the courts have got joinder between ourselves and the fiction now I can't get any clearer than that a fiction of the law therefore never hire a lawyer and never represent yourself if the judge sees, sees that you have no lawyer his first question is always going to be uh, you know do you have a lawyer and if you don't he'll say are you going to represent yourself? Now, a lot of the people in the free man movement have in the past gone in and said, yes, I'm going to represent myself. But no, you must reply, I will be myself. Now let's look at the courtroom because it's a scary, scary place. And if you don't know what's going on in there, 
then it makes it a lot harder. So the first the first thing that we have to realize is the judge is there to oversee the proceedings because there are other players in the court which we're going to introduce you to. The prosecutor, he comes in on behalf of the Crown. Now, no matter what, no matter what you've been told, no matter what you think, the Crown is actually your surname. Now, he is coming in on behalf of your surname or the deceased estate. But he's going to try to get you to pay the charges, which we will see. Now, the registrar comes in with the account books. Now, the registrar is the one taking, taking the gamble, and she has to make sure that she is going to get this through because what happens when you first go into court is that if they get a plea from you, then they're going to put a 90-day bond out or the registrar is going to put a 90-day bond out onto the, um, onto the bond market with the hope of getting a monetary return. Okay, so we've got three of them there, judge, prosecutor and registrar. Well, boy, that seems a bit stacked against us, doesn't it? So where do we, the real live men, fit into this picture? Um, well, it's going to be a switch and bait. They're going to try and switch us. The prosecutor needs us to step in and take over the role he is occupying because he's coming in as trustee of the deceased estate, but he does not want to uh, keep that role because if he does, he's going to have to get his checkbook out and pay himself. And I don't think he would like that. But should the man appear in court, um, whether he's with a lawyer, whether he's going to represent himself, no matter what, there is a maxim at law that states the presence of the body corrects the flaw in the name. OK, so your name is only John. It's not John Doe. So Doe is the crown. And but to get joinder, just the mere turning up in court, the presence of the body corrects the flaw in the name. So that's why we never go to court. We can we can throw it out before it gets there. OK, now that we are in court, it's plain to see that we were totally disadvantaged. Three of them against us. There's only one way to get out of the situation, folks. As the prosecutor has laid the charges, we must attack him and get the judge on our side. If we do that, we're going to win. But to ensure that we're successful, we need to know just a couple of things. Anytime the judge addresses us, he is offering us a contract. So don't worry too much about the name thing. Don't, um, don't get into big arguments about the name because the name isn't that important, I can assure you. Um, what is important is to see what he is offering us. It is a contract. Now, um, the way that uh, we respond to the judges, with all due respect, Your Honour, are you offering us a contract? If so, may we please, please have full disclosure of that contract. Now, whenever he says anything to us, we must respond to that. Don't try and argue the name. I, I can tell you, you're not going to get far with that. It's much better to, to try to... Um, you'll see in a minute what we're going to do. Some of the contracts he will offer us are, please take a seat or please be seated. What is your name? How do you plead? Please be quiet while I'm speaking. Now, if he offers you any one of those contracts, it is really, really important that you ask him if he is offering you a contract. But do it politely. Do it with all due respect, Your Honour. And remember this. The judge only has three shots or three attempts to get you into contract. And then he has to either leave the court or come in bring something else into the court. And we've had judges um, leave the court and then come back in and have another three shots. We've had the judges come in and say, arrest that man, and we've told the, uh, we've told them not to take another step forward um, because they're only offering you a contract. And if you accept that contract, 
uh, you will be in trouble. The judge will try many things to unsettle us, but if we stand our ground and ask for disclosure of the contract in a polite tone, then they must listen to us. When you've been to court a few times, it becomes easier and we jump in before the judge speaks normally. If, if we can get in, as soon as we walk in there and the judge uh, just looks at you, uh, we just say to him, Your Honour, with all due respect, before we proceed any further, may I ask the prosecution a question? Okay, the prosecutor has, is the one who has brought the charge, so we've got to address him. Should the judge intervene, politely ask, with all due respect, John, is he not the one bringing the charges? Why do I not, why are you denying me the chance to uh, talk to the man who is charging me? All right, because the judge will try to come to their aid all the time. Uh, in, in one court case, I actually um, uh, said I was there on behalf of the Crown and the um, the uh, the one who was who had come in on behalf of the crown, his eyes went as wide as saucers. Anyway, once we have the right to ask the following, oh, once we have the right to ask, we should ask the following questions. Uh, or oh, the following questions should have the charges dismissed or discharged. Any of the following questions will cause major embarrassment to the prosecutor, and the judge will try to intervene again. Now you must say. Are you trying to deny me justice, Your Honour? Number one, this is the first question you could ask. There's, there's five or six of them here. Would the prosecutor please identify the defendant? Now, as I've told you earlier in the presentation, the defendant is a deceased estate. Is there any way that the prosecutor can identify the defendant? Absolutely no. Now, the first time I did this in court, the uh, the prosecutor picked up a piece of paper that had my name on it and held it out towards me with his right hand and said, that's him over there. But he was actually holding the piece of paper in his right hand. So <clears throat> if they should try that trick on you, uh, just say, would the prosecutor please put his hand on the shoulder of the defendant? Now, if you've done your paperwork wrong, they may be able to identify you, but it's it's still a long straw. Mr. Prosecutor, you presume to know who I am. Who are you? Now, that one, that one will really make them squirm because they are coming in as the prosecutor, uh, sorry, as the trustee, and they're trying to switch you into that role. Mr. Prosecutor, may I have full disclosure? They can never, ever give us full disclosure. A and the reason that if they um, gave full disclosure, they would have to identify the defendant. They would have to identify what they're actually doing, uh, that what the charges are, uh, and various other things that they cannot disclose. It's, it's impossible. They cannot give you full disclosure. Mr. Prosecutor, please identify the injured party. Now, if you've, um, if you've been caught for running a red light or speeding, th there is no injured party. They cannot identify the injured party. Mr. Prosecutor, are you acting as trustee for John Doe Estate? Ooh, that one's going to... Uh, that one's going to uh, uh, get them. Uh, they could be administrator. Uh, so you, you could ask them, are you uh, acting as trustee or administrator for John Doe Estate and trying to make me, uh, trying to make yourself, trying to make me the trustee and you the beneficiary? Because that's what they're trying to do. They want to become the beneficiary and make you pay the charges. Mr. Prosecutor, are you trying to gain entry by deception and fraud? Now, entry, I won't go into it in this video, but you need to look up entry. It is in one of my other videos, but entry uh, is entry into our state by deception and fraud. And they certainly are. They most certainly are. There are many more questions that could be asked, but there will be no need. As if he fails to answer any one of them, just turn to the judge and say, Your Honour, with all due respect, we, we now ask that this matter be discharged. 
They may still try to test us as that is their job, but they're just making sure that we do know who we are and that we do know that they do know their procedure. And also be very careful whenever they address us as you, because we're not you, and say, Your Honor, would you please identify who you is? Because it's not us. Okay, now finally, just be safe in the fact that we are upholding our inherent rights. We have no right to be in the court. They're just using us for one thing. The court is actually the bank. It is the money system. And that's all they're trying to do is make money out of us to keep their stupid corporation going. So I hope this has been helpful. And um, uh, after a couple of times of watching it, you may... Uh, feel a bit more secure in going to court, or you may do the way that we do it, rebut all the presumptions and never go to court. Good luck on your journey.